my name is Kayla Smith and I'm doing my senior capstone presentation off of describe the physical health and social effects of psychoactive substances and the person using and their significant others. So I'm going to base my presentation off of no like the group of people that I have they don't know anything about drugs. Um, they don't know the effects of drugs and what goes in which category and um, how it affects the significant other. So I am going to start right now. What does a psychoactive drug mean? So it is a substance that acts primarily on the central nervous system where it alters the brain function resulting in temporary changes in perception, mood, and conscious behavior. So there's many psychoactive drugs out there and so I wanted to break it up into three categories. We have the uppers, the downers, and all arounders. Uppers is going to be your stimulants, downers is going to be your suppressants, and all-rounders is going to be things such as LSD, marijuana, things that kind of fog your mind. So I'm going to start with uppers. Uppers are going to be things, I'm going to write these down, these type of drugs. So we have cocaine. Cocaine. And excuse me if I spell these wrong. Amphetamines, such as Adderall, amphetamines, have plant stimulants, we have caffeine, and nicotine. These are some of the uppers. So, excuse my dog for growling. She apparently sees something. Um, so things that the uppers do, it gives you weight loss. And when it gives you weight loss, it is because it fools the body into thinking that it's getting nutrients and hydration when it really isn't. So you're malnourished and dehydrated. And so that's why you see a lot of people who are on stimulants, they lose a lot of weight in the time that they're doing it is because they think that they're getting nutrition and they're not hungry or thirsty and so that's where they lose all their weight and I think that's another reason why people enjoy doing uppers is because they're losing weight so fast that they don't want to stop. Um, it makes people talk a lot and it, um, it helps with ADHD, the Adderall does, but in overuse it's, you know, people kind of use it for their own fun when that's not what it's for. Um, it builds confidence, and these are for the short doses, for small doses, excuse me. And for larger doses, it gives you anger, paranoia, and violence. And so that's where this comes in is where the long use is people get very angry, and they get really paranoid. And so that's kind of where the uppers is not good is because of these situations. Their physical is it results in energized muscles for small doses and then it leads to insomnia and decrease in appetite as I said. Um, and also the cardiovascular effects is it constricts the blood vessels because blood flow is decreased in tissue and repair and healing are slowed. Heart race is increased and this is where people go into cardiac arrest is because they take too much cocaine at once and their heart can't handle it. So if you see someone who is on an upper, a stimulant, they're very excited, more confident. They could be kind of loud and rowdy. And then larger doses is where they get really, really angry and really paranoid. And so that's just kind of the effects when you see someone on an upper. So now we have downers. Downers is going to depress the central nervous system. So types of downers are going to be opiates. Opiates. We have sedatives, things that make you sleep. We have alcohol. And with alcohol, it can fool you into thinking that it'll give you a rush, you know, when you start drinking more and more, but then it goes back to being a downer because then you know, afterwards, that's why everyone kind of passes out afterwards is because it is a downer. And muscle relaxants. 
Oh, I spelled that wrong. Sorry, guys. That's a little accents. So, so these depress the central nervous system. It is a sedation, a muscle, a muscle relaxation. It can give you drowsiness, and it can eventually turn into coma if you use too much. So people who use these type of drugs are usually trying to numb some sort of feeling that they want to get away from. You see a lot of people who are on opiates, they are very foggy, really out of it. They just kind of go about like they just kind of pass through life. And so they just want to get through whatever emotions they're feeling at that time. They just want to numb it. And so you have things... Um, it's really, most people do not overdose just on one opiate. It's usually two or more. And so that's why they always say do not mix alcohol and opiates together is because it's very dangerous. And that's where a lot of overdoses happen. And so you see people who are on opiates, they have a slurred speech and their physical coordination is off. And so that's kind of like the telltale signs of they're using one of these. And... Um, they appear to be very calm, they're just, but then they're just, the long-term use can cause physical and psychological dependence, and I think that's where people have a really hard time of trying to get off of these drugs, is because they're so dependent on it that it's really, really hard for them to not use it anymore. So, as I said, these are, I mean, all these drugs are really dangerous, but opiates, when you mix them together, it's not good, and the fact that it's really easy to overdose. So there's that one. So now we have the all-rounders. So all-rounders are going to be things such as indoles, which is going to be like LSD. LSD. Your marijuana. And you have peyote. And ketamine. So, this category is a little different in the fact of it really depends on what type of drug you're taking. Is going to be for your effects. Oh, I forgot to put mushrooms on there. Um, so, it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. It raises the heart rate, the pulse gives you sweating and hallucinations. If you see someone on one of these drugs, they're usually not quite coherent. They're very all over the place. They don't make a lot of sense. And so that's where that kind of comes in, but it really depends on what type of drug you're taking because marijuana is gonna be much different than LSD. And so, and same with like MDMA, ketamine, and things like that. It just really depends on what drug you're taking, and then also the state of mind of the user. Someone who goes in taking mushrooms who's very paranoid is going to be just super paranoid. Like, if they're nervous taking the drug, it's going to make them super paranoid. And so, and you have someone who's super happy, they're going to be, oh, just all over the place and really excited. And so it really depends on the state of mind of how you... Uh, when you're taking the drug, excuse me. And so I think that's another thing for warning signs is you kind of need to know what the significant, like your significant other, how they are and like what their personality is. And that's kind of how it's going to base off of, off of what you know they're taking. So um, it really just, as I said, it's how powerful it is, is how it's going to affect the user and um, these things cause dizziness, they cause sweating, um, and so that's like the, that's why a lot of people at raves, you'll know when they're on drugs, is because they sweat and they're kind of out of it, and so that's why they, a lot of people in raves use these type of drugs. It is hard determining which chemical is causing which effect because most plant-based psychedelics contain more than one active ingredient, so I think that's where it's kind of hard is because you know there it's a plant-based and so you don't kind of see like which 
where, uh, excuse me, what drug is going to be in there because it, it's different for everyone. So and that breaks down the three categories of what drugs can, uh, how it can affect the user and like what the social effects is for each of these drugs. So now I am going to talk about how does this affect the significant other. It affects them tremendously. Um, I've seen how drugs tear families apart firsthand. It's so sad. And I think the hardest thing is, is that clients and significant others, mainly, you know, the family and the loved ones and the friends, they tend to blame themselves as a, what did I do to put them in this state of mind? And I think that they need to realize that it's not their fault and that they made the choice and when they make this choice, it's a disease and it just kind of takes over their life. And so really it's no one's fault, but the drugs, in my opinion. And so, I mean, you have to like, for them, they have to want the change and the client has to want the change. And so it's hard to see how much the significant other struggles. Signs that it, it gives is um, it can take time away from their loved ones, you know, interacting with them and spending time with them. It takes away time. Like, that's a, that's a good sign. They fight a lot more, which can be more violent because they are on drugs. And um, a lot of the topics can be um, arguments because of the drugs. And it could be the other way around where they're on drugs and they're more affectionate and more loving. And that's the only time is... And so that's kind of a sign as well. It just really just depends on the user, as I've been saying. And so um, fun fact is it is estimated that each addict and alcoholic affects the lives of at least four people. So it just shows that everyone goes through this, like as far as a significant other, is that I think they think that they're alone when they're really not. And so that's where I really advise people to go to al -Non meetings because it's a group where all the families and the friends and loved ones, they can get together and express how they're feeling and know that they're not alone. And this group shows that they are going through the same struggles and that they have to realize that they can't change this person, that this person has to change for themselves. And so I think the significant other needs to know that these are kind of the signs of what they're using and how it affects them and how it affects their personal relationship. And I think that the al -Non meeting is a really good way for them to understand how, what people are going through. And so, yes, thank you for listening to my presentation. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.